In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Substance Maya Toolkit. Now, what we want to do is make sure we have our high and low poly objects in there. And you can see I have my poly count up here at the top. And you see my high, I'm almost at 40,000 polys, which is way over um, a limit for any model in a game, especially if this is just a tire. So we have to take this high resolution detail of this model, bake it onto a normal map and an ambient occlusion map to put on this low resolution tire, which is only 280 polys, a much bigger reduction in polygons. And we want to transfer all this extra detail onto this low res. So again, you always got to make sure that we bring up the UV texture editor, that our UVs are all ready to go. So make sure that's all laid out. Make sure also that your, both models are sitting on top of each other in the same 3D space. So uh, I already did that. So I already deleted history and freeze transformation. So I'm just going to move that. And you can see they should sit right on top of each other. And what I'm going to do is you also want to rename them so the the Maya toolkit or the uh, substance toolkit can actually do its job correctly. If you started going through its documentation, uh, where is it? Here we go. Oh, here it is. And remember this is where we got this from. We got it from. From the uh, batch bake tools folder you got from the resource drive you go to shelf and in here documentation so this is just going in further into the plugin so if you go to how to bake under how to launch and you go to export parameters I'm basically kind of going through this page right here and you can see all the you know, if you have any questions about certain options, you can always refer back to this documentation to get more detail. So I'm going to be kind of going a, just over the, the main ones you need. But if you want to get in there more detail, you're definitely more welcome to come in here and stay, start looking at this documentation. It'll go into it more in depth. Uh, so the first thing you kind of notice at the top, we need to set our destination where all these maps are going to be going to so that's the export path at the top and then the next one we need to make sure that our names of our mesh are named in a particular way to make it work uh, properly so those are what we're going to do right now so at the top um, you can see in the outliner I have a tire and I named it underscore LP, and that's going to be my low resolution tire. So whatever name you want to come up with, it could be hammer low poly or LP. And then it could be hammer uh, HP, which means high poly. Uh, in my case, I want to name it a little bit more appropriate for the object. So I just named both of them tire, but then the low poly LP and then the high poly HP. Again, you, it's really important that you do that so the, the software knows which one is which. So you need to set that right off the bat. Um, again, if you go to mesh right here, and you can see this is the naming convention that you need to follow. So whatever name you have, you need to make sure you put this underscore LP and, H and underscore HP for it to work properly. So let's also set the folder. So we come over to open existing folder, and it pops over here. So somewhere I have, you know, my 330 folder, my Doom Buggy project in my scenes. I'm in another folder called Tire High High Res Modeling. And in here, I've you know I've saved off my work so far. So I'm you know setting it to another directory inside my Maya project directory. In this case, I put it underneath the scenes. So that's where I want everything to export. I'm going to leave this up because eventually. Everything that I bake out is going to go into this directory. So I'll push this over to the side for now. Now, now that you've set, you've made uh, the high poly and the low poly, you also need to make a cage. So here's another piece of geometry. 
And basically what a cage is, it's basically an area where between the low poly and the cage, it's going to read the data of the high poly to read um, the height information to make the maps it needs to create. Um, so it's a better idea if I just kind of show you how to build it and it goes a little bit easier from that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the low poly to start this cage um, geometry and I'm going to hit duplicate. So control D, I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to go to the tire LP1 and I'm going to name this CG. So right here for the cage, CG. And then I'm going to go to polygons and come up to the top and go to edit mesh. And then I'm going to do transform components. And what that's going to do is going to take me to like a vertex mode. And I'm just going to grab this blue arrow. And again, depending on what you're trying to do in, in the model, whatever the one is shooting out perpendicular from the surface is the one you want to move. And you can see what that's doing. It's kind of, it's almost like an extrude without the extra geo. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to push this beyond the high poly. So I'm basically making a space between the low poly tire and the cage. So what should be encompassed in that is that the high res should sit in the middle between the low poly and the cage. And what the program is going to do is going to read between the low poly and the cage to read the high, the, the, uh, high poly model to get an accurate read of how far from the low poly should it calculate and figure out the height information for the normal map. That's what it's doing. It's going to sit there and calculate it. And, it, and this cage out here, I don't want to do that. There we go. We're going to go to object mode. Is basically the endpoint. It's not going to go any further. It's going to stop at this geometry to figure out its calculation. So that's what it's happening. So we're going to set that. And again, this one doesn't matter on the UVs. Again, the UVs only matter on the low. All right, so let's go through a few more parameters. Now, what maps do you want to make? Uh, for what we need, we need a normal map, and then we need an ambient occlusion map. Uh, again, there's different material IDs, UVs, there's position maps sticking that. Uh, we're not going to get all into that. We just want to make two maps. So that's a normal map and an ambient occlusion map. And I want to make an ambient occlusion map based off the high poly object not the low poly but the high poly that one's going to have the most detail sometimes people need the low poly but not for our particular case um, if we come down here export settings hopefully um, auto load normal is fine export meshes is fine um, you could go through and add some more uh, options here again if you go back to the documentation it goes Further, as you can see right here, on which one uh, does what, what those functions do. So always read that documentation. I'm not going to go through all that. That might take some time. The one I do want to do is use the cage. Since we just spent the time making the cage, we want to use it. So turn that on. We're going to use OBJs as uh, the actual objects that we're going to use to bake. So what's going to happen is it's going to take all of these three objects and go to its separate program. So you're going to see a little program pop up, a little DOS prompt. And it's going to export out of Maya as OBJs and take it into another program. But you don't have to do that. It The software does it for you. Uh, output resolution, you know, what's your texture resolution that you want to use? Uh, this is a 1K map. Let's go up to a 2K map, so something a little bit better. Um, again, UV set should be set to UV0. That That's fine. Um, duration in pixels. This is basically uh, spacing in between each UV shell, uh, which we're not. We're pretty much going to be leaving all this in default. And then, if you're using any other settings like FBX set, uh, F XBX files, all that, that's all up in here. We're not going to be dealing with that. Uh, we do go down to OBJ, and you can see there's 
uh, options turned on for OBJ. And the one thing I always like to do with the OBJ is turn on smoothing for that, just for a little bit better results. Uh, but other than that, the, everything else should be fine. Um, now, once you set it in the bake settings, we're going to come up to the top and go to settings right here at the top. So you got bake and then settings. 